Hi, I'm Trevor Blumenow, CEO of Voodoo Robotics. Hey, another video in our series just showing you how to get information from your big block server. Here we go. So where we last left off, we were uh, looking at all the different ways in which we can post messages to particular devices. And in fact, we uh, looked at how we could actually post to multiple devices at the same time. What happens if we want to get information from Big Block? Uh, well, in that case, I've written a little routine here called Get Info, and instead of doing a post request like what we were doing before, we do a get request. And our get request, we save the results in this out variable. And notice that we've removed the JSON, so we don't have any JSON that we're passing. These headers actually are optional in a GET request. You don't actually need them. Um, you can include them, and I do just because there's no point in removing them. Uh, and then uh, this output, uh, well, the default from, from Big Block is to return JSON uh, whenever you do a GET request. So it's going to return uh, the information about this device in a JSON uh, uh, text format in the out variable. So here you can see that I'm going to uh, take the text part of the output, right, of the response, and then I'm going to parse it using the JSON parser here, this loads function. They call it a deserializer. Basically, it's parsing the JSON. And then I'm returning that piece of JSON from our function. And so the way that we use it, I've got a little example over here where I'm saying my JSON equals get info on this particular device, again, our favorite device. And then I've got a little print here, which uh, this JSON dump S is basically a pretty print uh, for a piece of JSON so that you can see what's in the JSON uh, really nicely. So let's run this code and see what it, pr what it produces. Okay, so let's pull this window up a little bit over here and you can see all the fields that it's sending back to us. So you can see right here, these are all the fields from that particular uh, output print. You can see that it's sending you the RSSI uh, to the closest turbo and here's the name of the closest turbo. Setting the value of the brightness that you've set in the device, the device ID, obviously, that's the device we requested display timeout that you've set. Uh, these are uh, the temperature, whether you're using Fahrenheit or Celsius uh, on this device uh, for display of temperature. And uh, a lot of our customers don't use temperature at all, and so this uh, field is ignored, as is uh, you know, this, the low temperature alarm and the high temperature alarm. You'll see that down below. Oh, here's the high temperature. The firmware that we're running on the device, pretty important. Uh, the, this is the uh, last time the firmware was updated on this device. You can ignore that. Uh, this is the last time that the RSSI value, this best RSSI, was updated. This is the last voltage that was reported from this device. And of course, the important point about that is that look at the updated time, right? You've got to make sure that this last voltage is a recent voltage. And here you can see the time code uh, for that update. This is the location override we talked about in an earlier video and uh, uh, what information you can get there. Uh, you know, that's the information essentially that you set. Uh, this is an area and then the location. Uh, and our statics, what statics we've set uh, for this device. Now, on modern devices, you can ignore static and static 2. Really, we're just focused on static A through E for this device. Uh, again, these temperature uh, values you can ignore. Uh, if you're using temperature, contact us and we can tell you more about these uh, values and what their meaning is. And um, this is the number of hours that this device has been running. This is a very important number. If you see a low number here, it means that this device was reset recently. Maybe somebody changed the batteries. More importantly, maybe this device is misbehaving and uh, this is often an indicator that uh, if you get a low number here that this device has been misbehaving. Okay, so that's what you see there. So let's uh, 
take it a little bit a little bit further here. Let's do uh, a more uh, comprehensive inquisition. Let's do this. We'll say get uh, devices, and we'll take the device ID out of there. And we're gonna instead of appending the device ID, let's just do a get request to that base URL, exactly as we did before. And now, uh, instead of this, we'll comment this, this line out, and we'll do um, get devices and no parameter. OK, let's see what we get with that run that code. Ah, we get a very long list of a whole bunch of devices, okay? Um, and that's because at Voodoo headquarters here, we have a lot of devices in our demo big block. Uh, we use our demo big block for a lot of purposes, and so they have a lot of different devices listed. Um, we could, you know, uh, if we wanted to maybe shorten that array, you could say um, my JSON equals, um, you know, uh, since this is an array, you could say my JSON uh, colon 10. Let's try that. See what that does. So that's going to give you the first 10 items in the array. Uh, now, What's interesting here is you can actually do something slightly different with big block. If you just put in the letter S right there, you're doing a get now to a slightly different endpoint. Let's look at what that does. If I do that and I get and I do a request, exactly the same thing. Exactly the same thing. So um, that's how you would get a list of devices and then of course you can use that you know an item in that array to get the info about a particular device very very useful information uh, now here's another little secret you can also do something like this let's make another one we'll say get turbos Okay, and uh, we'll go in here and just say get turbos. Let's see what that does. Now you can see the list of turbos. And similarly, you could say um, get turbo info and we put in a turbo ID here say turbo um, and then put in a plus turbo ID plus and then our slash to end that particular turbo so now we can get the info from a particular turbo and let's see how that runs and of course we're going to take let's just use one of these guys well let's go in here and do this and uh, we'll just take this guy I don't think that this is really necessary in this case not going to get a, you're not going to want to truncate that. So let's run that and see what happens. Well, here's all the information about a particular turbo. Uh, the uh, free RAM in the turbo, the IP address that it's using. Um, if you set a location for a turbo, you can set a location in big block for a turbo. You could also write to this location in a similar way that you saw uh, previously using our REST API. 
Uh, you can see what radio this uh, uh, turbo has running. Uh, this is a measure of the environment around the turbo value from zero to one. Uh, this turbo actually I think is off right now, so it's not actually real data. Uh, you can see what revision uh, the firmware is on this turbo, the temperature inside the turbo. Um, these are the devices that are out of range but still visible. Um, uh, these are the devices that are in range uh, of this turbo. Uh, you can also see um, uh, you know, what username uh, this turbo is using, which API user it's using. Um, on, on big block and this uh, if the turbo is using Wi-Fi uh, here's a measure of the Wi-Fi signal strength of that turbo. A lot of very very useful information here and uh, we hope you get a lot of uh, use out of uh, these videos and that, that these videos help you along your way in uh, doing your integration uh, with our big block and Scootkeeper servers. Thank you for your time.